Welcome to the first of two videos on exponential equations. This video is going to focus on the type of exponential equation where you can write both sides of the equation with the same base. Therefore, these equations will not require logarithms, even though they could be solved using logarithms. That will be covered in the next video. The idea behind solving this type of equation without logarithms is if we have a raised to the power of x equal a to the power of y, this will only be true if x equals y or if the exponents are equal to each other. So what we're going to do in this video is try to get a common base on the left and right side of the equal sign and then if we can do that we'll set the exponents equal to each other and solve. Let's go ahead and give it a try. On this first problem 32 is equal to 2 to the power of 5 so we can rewrite this as 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of 5 and then it follows that if these are equal to each other, then the exponents must equal to each other, meaning x must equal 5. And we can see that when x equals 5, this equation is true. On this next problem, even though we could use logs, we're going to write 27 as 3 to the power of 3 to obtain a common base on each side of the equal sign. So we would have 3 to the power of 2x equals 3 to the third, there's the 27 raised to the power of x plus 1. Now the rules of exponent states if we have a power raised to a power, we're supposed to multiply. So now we can rewrite this as 3 to the power of 2x equals 3 to the power of 3x plus 3. Again, now that we have a common base of 3, the exponents must equal each other. So we'd have 2x must equal 3x plus 3 subtract 3x on both sides, we would have negative x equals 3. Dividing both sides by negative 1, we would have x equals negative 3. If we want to go back and check this, if x is negative 3, we'd have 3 to the power of negative 6 equals 27 to the power of negative 3 plus 1, that'd be negative 2. These are equal to each other, but let's go ahead and verify it. 3 to the power of negative 6 and 27 to the power of negative 2. And you can see they check. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more of these. It does take some practice to recognize when logs are not required, but 8 is equal to 2 to the third and 16 is equal to 2 to the fourth. So we can rewrite this as 2 to the third to the 2x power must equal 2 to the 4, there's the 16 to the 4x plus 5 power. Again, we have powers raised to powers, so, this, so we multiply our exponents. This would be 2 to the power of 6x must equal 2 to the power of 16x plus 20. Now, since the bases are equal to each other, the exponents must equal each other. So we have 6x must equal 16x plus 20. If we subtract 16x on both sides, we would have negative 10x equals 20. Dividing by negative 10, we have x equals negative 2. So we'd have 8 to the power of negative 4 equal to 16 to the power of, that'd be negative 8 plus 5. That'd be the negative third power. And let's go ahead and check this one as well. 8 to the power of negative 4 and 16 to the power of negative 3. And again, it checks very nicely. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. 125 is 5 to the third. So we can rewrite this as 5 to the power of x squared plus 8 equals 5 to the power of 3 power of 2x, which means here we can multiply our exponents. We have 5 to the power of x squared plus 8 must equal 5 to the power of 6x. Again, the bases are the same, therefore the exponents must equal each other. So we're going to have x squared plus 8 must equal 6x. We have a quadratic here, so we'll set it equal to 0 and see if it's factorable. x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. It does factor factors of 8 that add to negative 6, minus 4, minus 2. 
looks like we may have two solutions. We have x equals 4 and x equals 2. So when x is 4, we're going to have 4 squared plus 8. That's 16 plus 8. 5 to the 24th must equal 125 to the 8th power. There's one check. And then when x is 2, we're going to have 2 squared plus 8. That's 5 to the 12th equals 125 to the fourth. Let's check both of these. 5 to the power 24 and 125 to the eighth. Looks good. And the next one, these are just half of what we have over here. So it's going to check, but let's go ahead and verify it. And there we go, both solutions check. So in this case, we have two solutions, x equals 4 and x equals 2. Again, we could have solved all of these using logarithms, and we'll take a look at that in the next video. But this is a nice technique to use if you recognize that you can write the left and right side of the equation with a common base. Thank you for watching.